U.S. coalition changing the rules of engagement at DMZ, allowing troops to return fire. The demilitarized zone along the 38th parallel in the Korean peninsula is one of the most the most hotly contested stretches of land on the planet. That line separates the communist north from America's allies in the south, and has come under renewed attention since Kim Jong-un began ramping up North Korea's nuclear ambitions. Big picture strategic problems have dominated the Korean issue, but just days ago a much more down-to-earth tactical question came to the forefront, when our South Korean troops allowed to shoot back. Last week, an apparent defector from the rogue regime fled south across the DMZ and was shot at by his former North Korean comrades. Even though South Korean troops witnessed the escape and quickly realized what was happening, they were unable to provide covering fire for the defector even as gunfire from the Kim regime rang out. The runaway was hit by bullets several times, but was rescued by southern troops. After intensive surgery, his recovery is still uncertain, but he may have been able to escape unscathed if Allied forces had been able to shoot back. Even though it appears that North Korean troops openly fired through the border and into South Korea territory, Complex rules prevented Allied forces from returning fire. Now, defense officials are reevaluating the rules of engagement at the DMZ. Although the South Korean Army took over the duty of keeping security inside the Joint Security Area from the United States in 2004, the authority over the use of force falls under United Nations Command, UNC, Commander General Vincent Brooks, explained the Korea Herald. South Korean soldiers inside the JSA are not allowed to use military force unless their action is justified under UNC rules of engagement applied to JSA, the newspaper continued. Confused yet? You're not alone. The rules of engagement are murky at best, and every situation has to be carefully evaluated. That can be hard to do when bullets are flying. The UNC commander considers two parts to determine whether such a response is appropriate whether there is a direct threat to our guards and whether our response would escalate the situation, stated General Su Wook, who oversees the Korean Joint Chiefs of Staff. If the North Korean soldiers were found to have crossed the MDL and fire shots even after the fleeing soldier crossed the border line, it would be a violation of armistice agreement between North Korea and the UNC, the Korea Herald reported. In light of the defection incident last week, a defense official told the Yonhap news agency that the restrictive rules of engagement may be changing soon. We're going to consult with the UNC to allow South Korea to return fire immediately when there is a gunshot from North Korea and there is a sign that a North Korean solider would bring harm to our forces, the unnamed military source informed Yonhap News. To put it in simple terms, if the enemy is actively shooting at you, you should be allowed to shoot back. It's not that hard to figure out. This shouldn't be Kim Jong-un rocket science. At the same time, there's no doubt that the DMZ is a tinderbox which could be sparked by just one incident. Although the engagement guidelines are being revamped, the military applauded the judgment and restraint shown by Allied troops. I think our soldiers did a pretty good job, South Korea's Defense Minister Song Young Moo said last week. They made a good judgment call to minimize the risk and deal with the North Korean soldier appropriately. The entire North Korean regime may have to be dealt with eventually. Until that happens, the 38th parallel remains one of the most tense places on earth. If you think American and South Korean allies should be able to defend themselves, share this article now, go now.